All right. Good evening. All right. I, um, as I mentioned Sunday night, we were going to be looking at the Proverbs that really based on the child to parent relationship, it's going to link very much to what we discussed Sunday night. And so, um, and it, I've really enjoyed the discussion following that class. Several things were brought out. And I said, I mean, Rodney Densa came up to me and I said, man, oh, we need to do round two. We, you know, I said, let's, I said, let's start it. Let's start over right now. Everybody that's in here, you know, there's so much more that can be discussed within uh, the, the parable of the prodigal son. Uh, and uh, Rodney brought out something that I had not thought about, that when we think about the parable of the prodigal son, you know, we apply it to our own sp- specific situation. And say you're the father and your child has gone away. Who do you compare yourself to within that parable? Well, we would compare ourselves to the father in that parable. And uh, some have and said, well, they've just got to sow their wild oats. Well, really, the father in that parable is God the father. And if our children are Christians and we're Christians, then we're the brother in that parable. And so even if we're the father, so my son getting up and doing the prayer, I was not ready for that. JJ should have let me know that he was going to do that. But following my son after doing his prayer, that just that just kind of hit a little different. Because he's my son, but he's my brother. He's my brother. And uh, and I think that's something that is it's it's important for us because we we got to come from another place to think about it like that. Because that felt weird. To say that my son is my brother. But that's what it is. And so how does then that apply? As we were discussing, it's the brother's responsibility. Am I my brother's keeper? That was Cain that said that about his brother Abel. But the thing was, remember the father said my son was dead and is now alive? That is Abel come to life. So we have before our children, before our brothers and sisters who have maybe fallen away, if they're still breathing, there is still chance. There is still hope. And it is our responsibility to go find them, like the concept of trying to find the lost coin and trying to find the lost sheep, leaving the 99 to go and find that one, leaving the nine and just sweeping up everything and trying to find the one. And I thought that was very pertinent to, to what we're discussing tonight, because we're going to go through the Proverbs, as I mentioned, and I don't have a PowerPoint for this because I'm going to do something a little different. Uh, several of these are just one verse passages, and so I'm just going to read them because it makes it a little quicker, but Christian is still back there. If you've got a comment, please raise your hand, he'll come to you, and then we can have discussion that way. And so we're going to look through Proverbs at the concept of the child-to-parent relationship, and so I purposefully stayed away from Proverbs last week because I knew we were going to be focusing on it tonight. And so, again, this will be touching on some things, but it is completely different because it's focused on the Proverbs. And so Proverbs and Psalms, a lot of them are poetic in nature. I thought it was important, it would be good for us to start with a poem. And uh, there was a a, a dad in our youth group, a dad of of kids I grew up with in Fayetteville, Georgia, uh, when... When I was a, a boy, I was referring to nine, during 9-11 and, and things like that. He was a great influence on us. He would teach us at, at times in the youth room. We didn't have a youth minister at the time. And so he wrote a poem. His name is Mike Gifford. And I'm going to read this. And it's, it's called A Parent's Broken Heart. And I, I shared this with Charlotte and asked her what she thought about it. Uh, and she thought it was pertinent. So it says, Tonight, a heart is shattered. A face is wet with tears. A mind is heavy laden with worries and with fears. Tonight a soul is praying in sad and mournful strains. Few tragedies on earth can bring such depth of pain. Dear God, I pray, be patient, long-suffering and kind. He's turned his heart towards sin. Please, Lord, give him time. Lord, it, it must be my fault. I must have erred some way. If if I'd been a better Christian, he would not have gone astray. 
Lord, I feel so helpless. How can I bring him home? I just can't bear the thought of losing this precious soul. Tonight is like the last one and all the ones to come for the parent of a prodigal till he returns to God. The doubts and fear and anguish keep weighing on the soul. There is little rest for the parent whose child has left the fold. If only sons and daughters who've chosen to depart could see how their unfaithfulness breaks a parent's heart. I think this sums up where the angst, where the sleepless nights come from based on this very concept. And so I'd like for us to look at the Proverbs concerning what Solomon in his wisdom has said. And it touches on the parent-child relationship when it's like Ephesians 6, 1 and 2. Children, obey your parents in the Lord, for this is right. Honor your father and mother, that it may go well with you. Uh, And it is with a promise that it may go well with you, that you live long in the land. Ephesians 6, 1 and 2 is really interesting because you think that it's almost a repeat of of verse 1 in verse 2. But it's children obey your parents in the Lord. That's within the household, under my roof as a parent. You you might have said, uh, you may have heard, a child under the parent's roof is Ephesians 6 verse 1. But verse 2 is honor your father and your mother. It's the idea of when the parents become under your roof, under your care. And so Ephesians 6, 1 and 2, it is the summary of the parent-child relationship for your entire life. And we think about, we have our children for, you know, 18, 19, 20 years maybe, 46, I don't know. Uh, We have our children under our roof. For a short period of time. And sometimes we talk about leaving of the nest. That's the, that's, that's the end. It's not. It's a continuation. And so this pro- the, the study of Proverbs is going to be really handling that entire spectrum. Whether the child is under your roof or you're under theirs. And so on and so forth. The proverbial roof, if you will. Proverbs 10.1. The Proverbs of Solomon... A wise son makes a glad father, but a foolish son is a sorrow to his mother. The word here for sorrow means a heaviness. And you could gather the heaviness within that poem. Uh, The primary meaning is a mental troubling resulting from affliction. Uh, And so, again, we're going to feel that when uh, when affliction. Uh, when folly has, uh, has taken part, uh, or our, our children have taken part in folly. Uh, the second one, and again, we've got 16 of these passages. So Proverbs 10 and verse 5. He who gathers in summer is a prudent son, but he who sleeps in harvest is a son who brings shame. Uh, so, you know, I think it's interesting Solomon is bringing out some things about the responsibilities of children. And, uh, you know, you hear about, you know, in the past uh, where maybe it was a a farming community that a lot of times your your farmers would have 10, 12 children. Why would you have 10, 12 children if you lived on a farm? (laughs) To work the farm. So there is an added responsibility within the household. And, you know, sometimes those responsibilities have come... Uh, I'm just as simple as taking out the trash and making your bed and things like that. But it, it, there are, it depends on the household and it depends on the, uh, the situation. But he's bringing in this idea of a son that pulls his weight, a daughter that pulls their weight and helps the family out. Proverbs 13, 1. A wise son hears his father's instruction, but a scoffer does not listen to rebuke. And so, first of all, Solomon is bringing up something important, that a father is not meant to be the best friend. You know, uh, my dad was not my friend uh, growing up at all. I remember my best friend saying, your dad terrifies me. He scares me. (laughs) And uh, 
and mainly because he was, he was raised by a single mother. And so he was not used to a, a father saying, son, you didn't do what you were told to do, go get it done. It terrified my friend when he'd hear, he's asserting dominance. <laughs> he didn't get it. But my dad, I knew he was my dad. And, uh, you know, only as, as, as time has gone on has my dad become one of my closest friends. Uh, and and he, I would say there have been times he's been my best friend. Mary's my best friend. It's a little different dynamic. But there's a transition, isn't there? The uh, Bible in basic English here says a wise son is a lover of teaching, but the ears of the haters of authority are shut to, to sharp words. And so if a child is not willing to hear rebuke in any way, it'll cause them to clap their ears and say, I, I don't want to hear it at all. And I think we, we live in a, in a time where if you, are, if you do any type of rebuke, it's, it's like you're you're being hateful. You got to stop and explain. I'm here to help. And if you don't hear this, you're not you're not going to learn from this situation. But sometimes that's going to be some hard, harsh words, some challenging situation. Uh, the fourth one is Proverbs fifteen five. A fool despises his father's instruction, but whoever heeds reproof is prudent. So. There's a quote from George Lawson here. He says, A father's instruction proceeds from love, and it is folly and ingratitude to despise it. But some children are such enemies of themselves that they break the spirits of their affectionate parents by spurning the admonitions needed for their own welfare. I'm doing this for your own good. You ever heard, this is going to hurt me more than it's going to hurt you? <laughs> Things like that. But isn't it amazing? Children often will call their parents. You hear that statement? Call their parents. Maybe thank you for, for the discipline. Thank you for you know things like that. I had friends in college did the same thing. I think when we went to college, our eyes were open to, whoa, we weren't all raised the same. You know, people would say, remember when you would go to the doctor and, and, and you would get, you know, you would get the... Uh, the medication, I would say, uh, no. <laughs> we always had garlic and cayenne and ginger and, <laughs> and vinegar. You mean that's not normal? <laughs> but I think when you're, when you're surrounded by a group of people who are all raised in different ways, it causes you to kind of, your eyes open and go, wow, there are different ways to do things. What's the best way? It causes you to go back to what is, wi what is wise, what is wisdom. And it's... Always the word of God. Fifth one is Proverbs fifteen twenty. A wise son makes a glad father, but a foolish man despises his mother. The word for despise here is hold in contempt. And it could also be shames his mother. And so those are, th those are things where this would be in a state of folly and and. and the prayer would be that this individual would recognize the error of their ways and be the prodigal son. We've got to look for those opportunities for them trying to come back to make things better, um, to overcome those, those arguments, to overcome those past uh, differences. Proverbs 17, 25 a foolish son is a grief to his father and bitterness to her who bore him. Bitterness would be here sadness. Proverbs 19, 13. A foolish son is ruin to his father and a wife's quarreling is a continual dripping of rain. Now, we're going to focus on the first half of this, the second half of the, the couplet will be examined later. But for now, the point is that two of these together portray an unhappy home. And it could be that these two can be linked because if there is something that's being done by a foolish son, it can affect the relationship between a husband and a wife. And it will. It will cause challenges and it will cause dysfunction. 
And so it's important that the, the, marriage, the marriage relationship stays intact when the child decides to depart. Uh, and, and I didn't get into this last week, but there is a temptation, is it not, that when your child stumbles to evaluate, did they really stumble? Right? Go back to the drawing board, go back to the scriptures and say, well, is this really a sin? Is it really bad that they're doing this? Do you really need to do that? Do you really need to do this? So, I've known of individuals that have left, parents who have left the church with the understanding that, well, if I leave the place where I know my child is condemned, then they're no longer condemned. Does that help? It's, it's one of those things where we're seeing that happening. Um, and I have, I, have, uh, I have some family that, that went down that road. They've returned to the Lord. But it, it's easier to go to the mire where they are rather than, than the, 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 the angst, the struggle. I understand the temptation. And so I, I think it's important that the, the, that, that the husband and the wife, the father, the mother, that, that, that there is a, a unity within the relationship when something goes awry with the son. Because remember this passage, a foolish son is a ruin to his father and a wife's quarreling is a continual dripping of rain. This would be a, a con, con, connection to these two in this couplet. And so... That dysfunction is going to cause ruin. Uh, the word for ruin is calamity or, dis, or destruction. Uh, the eighth verse, Proverbs nineteen twenty seven through twenty six through twenty seven. He who does violence to his father and chases away his mother is a son who brings shame and reproach. Cease to hear instruction, my son, and you will stay from the words. Of knowledge, so this idea of doing violence to a father to, to deal violently with is the idea to despoil, to devastate, to ruin, destroy, or spoil. NKJV is it mis mistreats. Um, the King James version is wasteth his father. That's that's a challenge when you've poured your life into that relationship. Uh, but the word here for for chasing away the mother, it's the idea to drive away, to hurry away. Doesn't want to listen to her. And that's really the idea. Stops listening to those who are trying to lead them in the right path. So how do you handle that if that's taken place? Well, if you continue doing what you know to do and, 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 and parent, and they're showing they don't want to, to do that. It, does it get better or does it get worse? It's going to get worse and worse. And so there is, a, there is a concept of the prodigal son there. And, uh, and, and, and maybe there is someone that can reach, uh, reach your child. You know, and, and just striving to do that. But being there as best you can. Maybe even in silence. Because they know. It's hard to know how to handle this. Proverbs 20 and verse 11, even a child makes himself known by his acts, by whether his conduct is pure and upright. So the idea is, you know, evidence of a person's training is seen early in his life or her life. A well-disciplined, well-behaved child is already far along on the road to becoming an honorable and upright person. James Burton Kaufman quoted. So there was a there was a video I saw, and it was a, you know, the, everybody has ring cam. You know, we moved into this new house, there's a ring cam. It's the only reason we have one now. Still haven't figured out how to use it, but we'll, we'll get there. Everybody has a ring cam. There was a, there's a little video going around of these two little boys, and they were being paid $20 to, to shovel snow from their neighbor's driveway. $20. These little boys were over the moon excited. They said, we are going to be so rich. That's, like, that's what they said. It cracked me up. $20. But she said, I have to give you this now because I'm going out of town. And so I'm paying you 
early. And so she closes the door, they walk away. What do you think those children said? They got paid early before the job was done. What do you think those kids said? Well, first of all, that's when they said, we are going to be rich. And the other one, the older one said, we better do a better job because she paid us early. Wow. I just thought, those kids are going to go far. Because I know a lot of adults, if you pay them early, oh me. You just sit there and go, please finish the job, please finish the job, please finish the job. That, those, those children, immediately I thought, those parents, there's some, there's, some, there's some amazing guardians in their life. Some, some guides that have said that. Because I don't believe that comes natural. But maybe to children it would, but it, somehow it sometimes goes away. We better do a good job. She paid us first. All right. Verse, the tenth verse. Proverbs 20, verse 20. If one curses his father or his mother, his lamp will be put out in utter darkness. Um, well, I mean, the opposite is true. If you honor your father and mother, it is a promise that it will go well with you. You will live long in the land. What Solomon is talking about is your lamp will be put out in utter darkness. He's talking about death. And under the law, if you curse um, your, your father or your mother, that's to disrespect or pay little regard to. These individuals, what happened to them? What was that? They were stoned to death. They were brought before the council, and if it was... It was worthy of, of exactly what was being said. Then based on Exodus 21, 17 and Leviticus 29, they were, they were executed. If you will turn to Matthew chapter 15 and verse 3 through 6. He answered them, and Why do you break the commandment of God for the sake of your tradition? For Well, I want to look. 1 and 2 as well. Then Pharisees, then, then Pharisees and scribes came to Jesus from Jerusalem and said, why do, you di, di, why do your disciples break the tradition of the elders? For they do not wash their hands when they eat. He answered them, Why do you break the commandment of God for the sake of your tradition? For God commanded, Honor your father and your mother, and whoever reviles father or mother must surely die. So Jesus reiterated the command. Their light, their lamp, must be Put out in utter darkness. But you say, if anyone tells his father or his mother, what you would have gained from me is given to God. Well, that, that indicates that honoring your father and mother is based on when they're older. And now you're taking care of them. And so this is monetary. You take care of them monetarily in their old age. This is under the, the, uh, the law. And the Pharisees have developed, if what you would have taken care of them with, if the pension that you've set aside for your own parents is something that you want to give to the temple, then you're free to do so. That was a tradition. He then said, what you would have gained from me is given to God. He said, he need not honor his father. So for the sake of your tradition, you have made void the word of God. You hypocrites. Well did Isaiah prophesy of you when he said, This people honors me with their lips, but their heart is far from me. So is that not a rebellion that the Pharisees had done in, in doing that very thing? They were not following their own, their, own, uh, their own father. And they were dishonoring their father and mother, but they weren't being stoned for it. Okay. So let's see. I had a I had an example of this that I think is pertinent to mention. I was at Free Hardeman, and uh, I, I had just become a youth minister in a little congregation outside of, of school. I was a sophomore, and we had a they had um, a prospective student day. It was called Rush, and so the kids would come, and so I brought my youth group that week that weekend on Saturday. And I remember all of my kids were in this room, and an upperclassman was, was teaching. So he's a senior. I'm, I'm just a plebe. He didn't know who I was. And uh, it's, it's 
So he asked the first thing in the class, who here wants to be like your parents? And he was asking for a show of hands. And he was trying to prove a point that no one wants to be like their parents. And, uh, and I may have, may have shared this before, but I was really angry that he was doing that to pit the kids against the parents. And so I immediately had an idea, and uh, it may have been a little bit cheeky, but I raised my hand. And, uh, and I don't, I don't want to be like my parents, I guess, you know, completely. I can't be a, a woman and a man. But I, 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 I thought about, first of all, this was wrong that he was even doing this, so I raised my hand. And he, he looked over, bypassed me, and he, he's like, nobody, nobody, I am in the middle of the room, and I am not taking my hand away. And he said, really, you want to be like your parents? I said, well... Um, at the time, I was a double major, and uh, I ended up dropping one of them. But at the time, I said, this, I said, my dad is a preacher. My mother is an art teacher. I'm a double major of Bible and art. What is your point? And he had no point. And he was angry with me. But the point was, he was pitting the kids against the parents. And I thought, well, <laughs> we're trying to encourage these relationships, Solomon sure is. We should not be uh, going against that. So, in uh, the, the 11th verse, any thoughts on that? The 11th verse I want to look at is Proverbs 23, 15 and 16. My son, if your heart is wise, my heart too will be glad. My inmost being will exult when your lips speak what is right. So this is the idea of the joy that a godly child brings to his parents or uh, his grandparents, his, his, fam his family. But this, it's interesting, in, in, in studying this, verse 16, I, I've never noticed this before. He says, my inmost being will exult. You know the word literally means kidneys? I'm sorry, I never think about my kidneys. <laughs> I, I never think about them, you know, exulting when their, their lips speak what is right. The, the idea is it represents the seat of one's emotions as the inmost and most secret part of man. So the inmost and most secret part of man and so it's the idea, it's at our core. That is what it will encourage us. And there's nothing else that, that could be done that would, that would replace that kind of encouragement. And so I, I guess that is a motivator, is it not? For us. As we're striving to be an influence for our children, no matter what age, where they are. All right, the 12th verse uh, is Proverbs 23, 19 through 21. Hear, my son, and be wise, and direct your heart in the way. Be not among drunkards or among gluttonous eaters of meat, for the drunkard and the glutton will come to poverty, and slumber will clothe them with rags. Um, when he says, direct your heart in the way, He's giving this as, as, a, as, as, a, as an advice. He's saying, go straight. Don't, don't go anywhere near crooked paths. And he's referring to two that lead to crooked paths. The drunkard and the gluttonous eater of, of meat. Um, so it's a father's warning to his son about unwise and evil associations. Um, I thought it was interesting, for the drunkard and the glutton will come to poverty and slumber will clothe them with, with rags. Um, I think when, when you've spent time with someone who, who throws, you know, the best, you know, events and things like that, and you can get to a point where, wow, that was great, that was fun. And uh, I know growing up, my best friend, uh, he lived on Lake Spivey, where uh, the Truett Cathy and all the... All the Cathy's lived, and and uh, and the you know I'd go over the weekends and hang out with them. Man, that was that was some fun. But uh, then we'd come home to the preacher's house. <laughs> it was a little bit different, 
than being on Lake Spivey and, 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 and those other things. I enjoyed being there because the food was, man, a lot of it. And if you get to that point where that's what you want, man, you can get the wrong idea about, about how things go. Proverbs 23, 22. Listen to your father who gave you life and do not despise your mother when she is old. And so this is Solomon uh, reiterating the concept of honoring your father and mother. The, the idea of taking care of your, your parents when they're, when they're old. Because, uh, again, Ephesians 6, 1 and 2, under verse 1, under parents' roof. Verse 2, parents under yours. The 14th verse is Proverbs 27, verse 11. Be wise, my son, and make my heart glad that I may answer him. Who reproaches me? The reproach could be about the son's actions. If they are evil or about the father's abilities as a parent if the son is being disobedient. So it's, it's, it's important. I remember my dad would say, don't forget who you are. And more importantly, don't forget whose you are. I knew he was talking about the father who is in heaven. That's how I always, always heard it. And it's a, it's a very challenging thing for a preacher's family. And I realize that because I'm raising children in a preacher's family. But what I did reflected on the preacher. And it could have been very easy for my dad to say, Son, if you do that, I'm losing my job. And that's a very challenging place. That would be a very challenging place to be. And I think, uh, and actually I've known of a preacher's son that was trying to reach, he and I talked about it, he was the preacher's son across town, and he was trying to reach goths in his high school. And so he started wearing black clothing and uh, hanging out with the goths. And, but he told me, and this was a kid that would go to preacher's camp, and he would put lessons together, and he was always wore the polo and khakis. Well, he decided he was going to reach the goths, and so he started wearing black and you know, the, the congregation fired his dad because he was wearing black and hanging out with the goths. That affected that young man for the rest of his life. And, and what, what this passage is, is saying, that it's, it's easy for this, Be wise, my son, and make my heart glad that I may answer him who reproaches me. Solomon is he's, he's talking about how what he's doing is going to reflect on him. I remember thinking that was the hardest thing that, that I heard. Now, that was what I was told. I cannot verify all of those things. I know what he told me, what he was planning to do. Then I find out later that that ended up his dad losing his, his job. And so we need to recognize that that, that, that happens. Uh, I remember being shoved down. I've, I've said this at CIA. I was at, uh, when I was a kid, playing on the playground in the church building. And a kid shoved me down. And I got up and I shoved him down. There was a mother that watched both of us do it. And she said, hey, you're not supposed to do that. You're the preacher's son. She said that to me. And I remember asking my dad, why did she say that to me and not say that to him? And I remember my dad said, well, sometimes, um, and, and he said, I don't, know what's, I don't know what's going on in that person's life, but sometimes it's easier to, if she can find that there is something wrong with the preacher's son, she doesn't have to listen on Sunday." And that, that helped me in understanding, okay, it's a fishbowl, and it's there, and I understand it. And uh, I think we've got, we've got to understand that, first and foremost, we're to love the Lord our God with all of our heart, soul, mind, and strength. And as a result, we can love our neighbor as ourselves. But the responsibility of what we do does reflect on our families. Deacons' children, elders' children. 
You see the pressures that can be there. And as parents, we've got to do our best to try to remove those pressures. Well, what about a, a Christian's children? Well, it's the same, should be the same pressures. But we as parents try to do our best to remove them. Proverbs 28, 7. The one who keeps the law is a son with understanding, but a companion of gluttons shames his father. Uh, shameth his father is equal to insult or humiliation. Um, the idea is whoever keeps the law is a discerning son, but a companion of gluttons shames his father. That's the New King James Version. Uh, the basic English version here says, He who keeps the law is a wise son, but he who keeps company with feasters puts shame on his father. Uh, I mean, it, it, that's, that is a comparison to what the, the prodigal son did. He lived in wasteful and riotous living um, a, until the, the money ran out. Uh, the, the final passage, and we're, we're going we're gonna to wrap this up pretty quickly, actually. Proverbs 28 and verse 24. Whoever robs his father or his mother and says, that is no transgression, is a companion, a companion to a man who destroys. Whoever robs his father or his mother and says, that is no transgression, is a companion to a man who who destroys. Uh, that would be, again, a reference back to Matthew 15, 3, the Pharisees. They are, they are a man who destroys. And anyone who's following the Pharisees' teaching was a companion to a man who destroys. Uh, I think that's, um, they weren't really paying attention to the Proverbs when they, uh, when they established that tradition. It was all about the money. Oh, there is one other. Proverbs 29 and verse 3. He who loves wisdom makes his father glad, but a companion of prostitutes squanders his wealth. Now, what does that remind you of? What does that remind you of? The prodigal son. Now, I thought about it. How do we know that he was a companion of prostitutes. Because it says so, but when did it say it? Because when I looked at it, it doesn't say when, you know, that he went and he spent all that he had. And he, then he goes into, he's in destitute, and he goes into the, to the, the pig pen, verse 11 and following. But it doesn't say anything about the prostitutes. But it does say. So when, when did it happen? Luke 15, 25. Luke 15, 25. Now his older brother was in the field, and as he came and drew near to the house, he heard music and dancing, and he called one of the servants and asked what these things meant. And he said to them, Your brother has come, and your father has killed a fattened calf, because he has received him back safe and sound. But he was angry and refused to go in. His father came out and entreated him. But he answered his father, Look, these many years I've served you, and I never disobeyed your command. Yet you never gave me a young goat that I, met, uh, that I might celebrate with my friends. Well, is that not Proverbs 28 and verse uh, 7? No, not 28, 7. Proverbs 28, 24, whoever robs his father or his mother and says that is no transgression is a, as a companion to a man who destroys, he's doing what the Pharisees have done. And he says that he's never broken a command, that he's never disobeyed a command. Well, he's not his, his brother's keeper. He has not fulfilled his responsibility as a brother, but he sits there and thinks he is fine. And so he's just as rebellious as the other brother, only he stayed in the pew. He never left to the far country. Notice he said, verse 30, But when this son of yours came, 
who has devoured your property with prostitutes, you killed the fattened calf for him. So how did he know? Because he hadn't seen him in years. He wouldn't go in. There, he, he couldn't have followed him on Facebook. He, he had no way of knowing that. But Jesus gives it there for a very important reason. Because verse 1 of the chapter, now the tax collectors and sinners were all drawing near to him. And the Pharisees and the scribes grumbled, saying, This man receives sinners and eats with them. And so Jesus brings up who the sinners were here. And they're sitting there and they're saying they're not going to come in and celebrate with Jesus. The same thing. They are their brother's keeper. They need to be reaching them. Uh, And he said to him, Son, you are always with me, and all that is mine is yours. It was fitting to celebrate and be glad, for this your brother was dead and is alive. He was lost and now is found. He was lost like the lost coin. He was lost like the lost sheep, but he's now found. Because he made the decision to return. You know, it is so wonderful when people make the decision to return. And so often, we see them when they come through those doors. They've made the decision to return. How do we receive them? It's so important that we wrap them up in love. And, uh, and maybe leave the rest to God. I, I think that coming through those doors is so often the indication I've been in the mire, I'm returning. Um, So, any thoughts on on these passages that we brought out? I I know this again, it's an overview of of a specific relationship between children and parents. Solomon thought a lot about this. Any thoughts? Yeah, Jeff. Jeff. I think all these like passages just showed like kind of what we were talking about last time is there's a, this dual relationship of you know there's the father's obligation and there's the son obligation. We just we read a lot of passages about how you know just like in the prodigal son, the father was wonderful to the son, but the son chose to wander away. Right. You know, and it wasn't for a lack of the father doing anything right. It was right. the son's own foolish choice. And so a lot of these verses I think really help show show that. Um, the responsibility of father, but also the responsibility of a son, too. Right. So. Well, and that's a good point. And I think we need to realize a lot of these passages are a companion of gluttons, a companion of drunkards, a companion of, of those who, let's see, the drunkard and the glutton will come to poverty and slumber will clothe them with rags. Those are your companions. I mean, that's Proverbs 23, Proverbs 27. It's all about who are the friends of our children. Um, and so it's, it's not just the, the relationship of the father and the, the mother. Again, that is Ephesians 6.1. That is a limited time. But so often it's the relationships, you know, maybe during that time and after that can cause the leading, of, leading astray. Yeah, Rodney. But we also need to not forget the other side of the coin mm. is when, when the relationship with the parents and the child is good. Right. You know, in um, Third John one four it says, "I have no greater joy than to hear that my children are walking mm. in the truth." Amen. There's so no greater joy. That's what we need to focus on. Also, Amen. the other side of that coin. That's right. And and focus on the fact they can, they can put themselves around good, godly Christian children. I think that becomes a, a priority as well. Um, that's when, when we were approached by the elders here almost eight years ago, well, seven, ah, maybe seven and a half years ago, about coming, we, we had just gone to Ohio to try to help that congregation in, in a very challenging situation that they were facing. We felt like we had helped prepare them, and so we, we were contemplating it. We said, the first thing on the list, Jefferson Christian Academy. 
was on the list for our boys. We thought about having Christian, if we didn't have, if we weren't homeschooling, we thought about Christian education. And, what, and, and that was, that was so important. And it's because of the concept of the, I, I know what mom and dad can do, but it's the companions as well. Uh, but sometimes it can be the hub where all the kids hang out is your home. And if you can, can nurture that, man, that's fantastic. Um, yeah, thank you for that, that comment. And I uh, appreciate the other side of the coin. So that was, that was good. All right, let's, uh, let's go to God in prayer. It's, it's a little bit past time. So thank you all for your attention. Father God, we bow before you. And Father, we're, we're striving to access wisdom. And, uh, and, and Father, I realize that we're all in different places in, in our lives, in our relationships. And, and uh, Father, I, I pray that, that, we will, that we'll be the influences that we can, no matter where we are in the relationships with our children. And that um, within that spectrum of, of under our roof and, and us under theirs, uh, that we'll strive to, to put you first. And, and Father just allow today to be the focus and leave the the past in your in your hands and uh, but also uh, father i just pray that uh, we'll look to to you and that your will be done and it's in your son's name we pray amen thank you all